Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends, we're back. Little less hair? Same love for trashy TV. After looking back at Viva La Bam in my last video, I kept falling down the old MTV wormhole, and I fell hard. A little bit after I made the Viva La Bam video, I decided to make a video on Robin Big, but no matter how much I kept cutting down clips from it, YouTube just kept saying no. So I decided to sort of switch directions and take a look at some of the earliest docu-series that I ever watched. MTV in the early 2000s used to make documentaries, and they used to make a lot of them. They mostly followed the lives of the channel's biggest demographic, which, you guessed it, teenagers. The big docuseries that I remember was always True Life, which followed the lives of all different types of people, from cheerleaders to adult entertainers. It essentially was a glimpse into different subcultures of society and showed you how the other side lived. Which turns out this show went on way longer than I expected. It went on from 1998 to 2017, Honestly, you could have told me it ran from 2003 to 2006 and I'd believe you. And now the only docu-series that I can think of that still runs on MTV is probably Catfish. And even that show is fighting for its life for a time slot against ridiculousness. Along with the docu-series, they also made full-length documentaries, which brings us to the topic of today's video, Fat Camp. And I'm gonna give a quick disclaimer here. This documentary, horribly outdated. I'm going to be poking fun at all the camp drama here, but in all seriousness, rewatching this made me a little uncomfortable at times. It really displays the fat phobia that has been coursing through our society for... ever? The early 2000s especially was a time where dieting shows were at their peak. I remember I used to watch The Biggest Loser each week with my mom, and I never thought twice about it. Once I got older and saw the clips resurface, I was horrified. That show was horrible. Dan, no! I don't believe it's anybody's place to ever make comments about other people's bodies. The whole idea of this weight loss camp makes me feel a little uneasy. As you'll see, the camp made these kids work out constantly while seriously restricting their diets. Doing that and then sending these kids back home where they don't have the time or the resources to keep up with this insane exercise routine and diet, it's only a recipe for disordered eating and body dysmorphia to come. These kids are so young and they already have such a horrible outlook on their bodies and have correlated that with their self-worth and that's awful. And a side note, you know, for the people who are like, trigger warnings are for the leftist communist blue-haired bitches of society, get over it. I kicked old people out of wheelchairs and called people slurs in my day and nobody batting an eye. Get over it and be grateful that you don't have these triggers that can make everyday life horrible. This documentary was filmed in the summer of 2005 and released in February of 2006. It follows a group of kids sent to Camp Pocono Trail and their day-to-day -day life in a weight loss camp. I won't be covering that aspect though because why would I make comments about a bunch of kids' weight? It's a little weird. What I will be covering though is the completely unnecessary and yet completely hilarious drama that ensues when you throw a bunch of teenagers together. Camp is prone to drama. This is a drama-free zone. So that was a fucking lie. Flip phones, horrible outfits, and awkward conversations galore. Let's hop into this time capsule. The main campers that we follow here are Diane, Matt, Marisa, Braylon, and Petey. To give you a quick rundown on these five, Matt seems like a typical football jock type, but he seems pretty nice. Diane's just a homeschooled girl who wants to go to school and live a normal life. Braylon's a camp counselor who doesn't want to be a camp counselor, and that's going to be very evident very soon. Maritza is a hero, plain and simple. You'll understand why soon. And Petey, a bitch, plain and simple. Petey's thing is he had a brief fling with Marisa last summer. She doesn't like him anymore. And now he's upset and shit-talking her to every pair of ears at the camp. Well, except the owner of the camp. He cries like a bitch when he meets him, but again... We'll see that soon. And let me give everybody an additional warning here. I don't condone child abuse in any way, shape, or form, but Petey could catch these hands. I was just kidding. Come on. Come on. You guys know I was just kidding, right? Braylon gets on my nerves too, but Petey? Let's move on. Oh wait, I forgot, we can't move on, because the first thing that we have to watch is Petey roaming all over this camp trying to find Marisa like Predator hunting down Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers. I need to find out where Moe's bunk is. Can you tell me where Marisa Crescenzio is, Moe? I don't trust her, she's hiding. Moe! I'm gonna get you! Damn her. Ugh, I hate her. 
Maurice, it's Petey. Call me back at this number. Like, as soon as you get this. Even though I know you won't just do it. She's such a bitch. If no one's gonna say it, I will. Way too good for you, dude. Wait, hold on. Cause see, now I'm getting paranoid. And I don't know how. Hey, Smoke, no one's gonna walk back here because all the cabins are down there. Ah. Asshole kid number two, Braylon, hi! Also, I don't blame these kids for being mean or emotional at times. They're kids. They're also growing up and everyone around them and every piece of media is telling them they need to change their appearance. I'd be mad too. But damn, Braylon could really have a kid drown on her and I don't think she'd ever notice. I've been homeschooled for about a year and a half and it is hard to find friends. And I want the teenage high school experience. This is the high school that I'll be going to next year if I'm healthy enough to be able to attend school. This summer's crucial for me to lose weight so I can go. Diane honestly seems really sweet, and I'm rooting for her to be able to go to public school. Guys, what cabin are you guys? Marisa got so bad. She's pretty bad. Oh, dude, when I saw her, since I saw her last time, she got really big. Fuck you, Petey. Well, what am I gonna do? I feel skinny. Any he hates How can you hate Mo? I don't hate her, just the fact that she said a lot of shit about me. Yeah, they used to date last year, like all summer. We keep that down low. Yeah. Good luck with that, Petey. Asking kids these age to keep things on the down low is the equivalent of asking Drake to stop texting middle school girls. <coughs> Allegedly. See the girl in the purple walking up the hill? Doesn't she have a boyfriend? No, she doesn't have one. But she did get big since last time I saw her. Her ass got She's such a whore. She's like pretty. Oh she God, got she makes me so mad just looking at her. Marisa. Why, because you want her? Basically. Petey is a textbook incel, and I'm honestly wondering if anybody from MTV even attempted to talk to this kid and maybe save him from his asshole ways. It's my first time at summer camp, though. Yeah, you should, so. It's gonna be great, because you're way, the average girl-to-boy ratio is three to one, so that's cool. Nope, guess not. And while Ben Shapiro Jr. is out here, Braylon is maybe keeping up with her camp schedule? Hanging out with her kids? Nope, she's sneaking out. I got some Pop-Tarts, s'mores, my favorite, and a green tea, Arizona. To be honest, swap out the s'mores for brown cinnamon sugar Pop-Tarts, I'm sneaking out as well. But now it's time to shine light on my absolute favorite person in this documentary, Marisa. Petey writes her a letter confessing his love for her, and knowing this boy's bullshit, she runs off and shows her entire bunk. As she should. Normally, I wouldn't condone it, you know, he wrote down his very true and personal feelings for her and her only to read this. But this man went around the entire camp telling everybody she's a crackhead, so I think it's fair game now. She plays this nice act at camp. She's a stoner. I've seen her on cocaine. I've seen her on heroin. I've seen her on shrooms. She also creates, in my opinion, the best scene in this documentary. Diane gets fed up of her bunkmates being mean to her, so she gets Marisa, who proceeds to handle this in the best manner possible. I'm not gonna show it all here because the whole scene involves her taking her sweatshirt off and exposing her bra um, and showing that is very very weird because you know, she's a child. But I will keep playing the audio because I think it truly is such an amazing moment in this documentary and something that certainly has stuck in my head since I watched it. Now why do I have a girl at 10.30 at night coming over to me crying? Can someone answer me that? Anyone? Please, don't jump all at once. You guys saying that she smells or saying, go take a shower, you smell, you need a shower, that's bad hygiene, that is rude and disrespectful. And you guys are 13, 14, 15 years old. I should not be having to yell at you guys. By laughing at someone from dropping their towel, you're just a big ass. We have a low self-esteem here. Everyone is scared of their own body. And by you guys laughing, just makes the whole situation worse. This is supposed to be a comfort zone. How would you guys like it? You, what? If my towel ball, or the skinniest person in the world's towel ball, I don't want to see anyone's like, I, was, I wasn't it's, laughing because of yeah. her weight or anything. I wasn't, I wasn't We're girls. We all have the same towel. things. Boobs. <laughs> Who cares? You have the same exact thing. Every single girl. You understand me? By laughing, though, that is not something you do. I'm sure you all know what it's like to be made fun of. And if you don't, then consider yourself so lucky. Braylon gets in trouble with Tony for sneaking off campus, which again, foolish move on her part. I'm not risking my job for s'mores Pop-Tarts. 
I'm risking them for brown cinnamon sugar pop tarts. She pulls the classic deny, deny, deny tactic that she didn't leave campus, even though she had a full camera crew following her and documenting it. But I guess the camera people weren't snitches, so honestly, respect to them. She ends up telling Tony the truth, and then just ends up getting kicked out for being horrible again. <laughs> Oh, Do you have any idea why you're here right now? Yeah, because I talked to Amanda earlier. Uh huh. About buying Morgan's cigarettes. I didn't even hear about that. Uh -huh. Well, you're not doing a job. You are a poor role model for the kids. And you're not doing anything. You're going to become a camper or you're going home. You're no longer going to be able to be a counselor. Dad, I'm not staying here as a camper. I was doing a job. I don't care what he says. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Hey, listen, she's flipping out over here. She's yelling. She's screaming. You gotta send somebody. Petey finally gets called out for being a dick, then proceeds to cry in Tony's office like the little abomination he is. I swear to you, I didn't do anything. You are acting inappropriately. Petey. Listen, you don't have to get so okay. No, I am because I, I've been... Dude, dude, uh, you don't have to get what, I'm just trying to be emotion. so nice. Let's see, girls here. She got so big, holy Come sit with us, let me a party. Oh my god, they're, they're losers. We just walk away. <laughs> Tori, Tori, we need to walk away. After this, nothing happens to him. He continues being awful, and instead of being sent home or, you know, reprimanded in any way, he gets a girlfriend. How? Then the older campers get to go on a trip to a roller rink and another girl flirts with him. I'm so confused. Come on! His girlfriend finds out he was acting up with a girl on the bus, they break up, then he pressures her back into getting back together. Like the Romeo he is. Chelsea, I talk to you seriously. You deserve better than me. You really do. No, you really should just dump me. Because you really need to find someone better, because I'm an ass. I really am. So seriously, you really should. Chelsea, I miss you. Chelsea, I miss you. Chelsea, do you miss me? Chelsea, give me another chance. Can we go out with me again, please? Yes. See? <laughs> this child is a walking red flag. Oh, and all this is happening, by the way, while he still is very open to everybody about the fact that he's still in love with Marisa. Are you jealous? Are you being serious? Mm -hmm. Very lucky for her, though, she begins dating Matt. The camp does elections to pick a camp president. Since Petey loses, HA! He decides to spend his free time making this poor younger couple feel horrifically uncomfortable. Hold her hand now. Now kiss her. I gotta go. I need to contact the FBI. I don't care if it's been 15 years. They need to be notified. You kiss her right now. Yeah. 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 Kiss. Doug. Kiss her now. Kiss. Kiss. Her. Marisa ends up cheating on Matt with another counselor, but like any healthy high school age relationship, they get right back together without talking about it. Am I still going out with you now? Or... Yeah, it's up to What's you. No, it's really not. Yeah. Oh, hey. It's up to you. No, yeah. If it was up to me, I'd say yes. Okay, then I guess that's yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I, I can always tell you. <laughs> what? What do you think you can get? Diane this whole time has been hanging out with her mom, who's one of the nurses at the camp, and jamming out to a teenage tribute band, and she is living her best life. I see a bit of myself in Diane. If you throw on Blind Melon, I'm not being held responsible for any damages done if I start a mosh pit. The final week is an event that they call Color War, where the camps are put into two teams and compete in events against one another. I think this camp is responsible for most of the world's littering problems. Another moment where Petey's a little blubbering crybaby is when he makes his goodbye speech. Look, I don't care if you're gonna cry at the end of a summer camp experience. It can be a very emotional time for a lot of these kids. But if you've gone out of your way to be horrible the whole summer, only to cry about leaving your friends? Bitch, what friends? You suck! Petey writes one last letter to Marisa and went home to become both a serial killer and president of the United States. The moral of the story is kids are horrible and they need to be stopped.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. Thanks. I found an article online from 2016 that gives updates on the kids, and for the most part, they all seem relatively normal. Matt, Braylon, and Diane all seem to be living normal lives with loved ones. Hmm. Petey sure is smiling a lot for somebody who doesn't manipulate. As I was mentioning before, for anybody who remembers the early 2000s, well, most of the 2000s, I should say, it really was a time of fat phobia. Actually, every time until very recently, the world, well, this country at least, hasn't exactly been the most friendly when it comes to body positivity. But I think one of the biggest cases that shows how documentaries like this can affect kids is what happened to Marisa. After the year at camp, Marisa experienced issues with eating disorders. She's seen briefly in the sequel that was released in 2007, and it shows that she lost a lot of weight in a very short span of time. She's openly talked about how seeing the documentary with her family made her embarrassed that her father had to see the scene where she had to take her sweatshirt off, and that was kind of the start of her problems. Which I can understand completely. I wouldn't want that put in the documentary. I don't want my friends, my family, I don't want strangers having to see that. I feel like the least that they could have done is censor her in that scene, because you know. Filming and then showing an underage girl undressing is a little weird, to say the least. Luckily though, she seems to have beaten her eating disorder and is now a coach for her own program for weight loss. At the end of the day though, watching this as a kid probably wasn't the best idea. Imagine sitting at home and seeing kids that look just like you calling themselves ugly and worthless because of their weight. I feel like it definitely jump-started a generation of body dysmorphia. If you're gonna leave this video with any takeaway, I hope it's that if you're about to make comments about somebody else's body, keep your mouth shut. Your weight doesn't mean shit, eat what you want and just have fun because honestly life is never guaranteed and the earth is slowly dying on us. And that used to be a joke that we'd all say 10 years ago, but you know, scientifically the earth is dying on us. So why are you gonna spend last fleeting moments on earth being a dickhead about somebody else's body? Just don't. As somebody who grew up constantly seeing those magazines when you go to the grocery store about oh this celebrity gained 10 pounds or look at the cellulite on this lady it's very harmful people don't need your criticisms or your comments they need acceptance and if you're not going to give that to them well you're just a regular pd then aren't you don't be like pd bye to everybody except pd